With a small stuffer in there, you can definitely hear the reeds working. So that's good. These new stuffers, I can't get in there without disassembling the case. And I think instead of doing that, I think I'll design something more permanent. Something I can bolt in there. As it is just 3D printed parts, I can, whenever, just replace them with something else. Experiment. That's the beauty with a 3D printer. Just a reminder, this giant crankcase volume is great for on the pipe full power. It just doesn't work for starting. And I didn't pay much attention to the primary intake because a lot of people are confused here. This is the primary intake and it's not really important. It's just for starting and warm up. And back here, there, that intake, that's the secondary or I should really call that the primary and this is just the auxiliary intake. So that big intake in there, that's what I've been um, des designing around, what my model in Engmod when doing simulations have uh, used and I haven't paid much attention to, the, to that read intake. This is valveless, no valve resonance will be a pretty long stack there, relatively long, 130 millimeters I think, if I can remember correctly. Now that we got the engine somewhat running, we need some water cooling. A little mishap in machining, but I'm just gonna epoxy it in there. And I'll take off a little bit on the sides here too, to make room for the bolts. Also the cylinder has this hole, which I use to get the, um, the plaster out of there after casting. And also this hole, which was a vent hole for air to get um, out of the mold. I never did test with the reed valve isolated and I'm starting to think that's what uh, made the difference here so let's assemble and uh, hook up some water cooling and see if it runs without the stuffing but with the, um, with the metal reed or the reed cage.
<sighs> I haven't got the o-ring for the um, spark plug spigot. I can't fix that with goo. Bummer. Okay, let's test it without cooling. Reads without stuffers does not work. It's not conclusive though, because now my ring gap is between 9.9 and 0.95 millimeters. And that's excessive. That's almost a millimeter ring gap for 40 bore. I've got an untouched ring though, so um, I'll grind away the T part to make those slots I've made in, um, in this one. Not sure you can pick that up on the camera. There's, there's a comparison. So I'll treat this ring the same way and gap it pretty tight. Hopefully we can get some testing done before it wears down too much. They're too soft. Mark is working on new rings and a piston. About the piston, Ken Sieber on the Kiwi Biker a forum pointed out that the volume behind the ring might have gotten too large when I removed that part of the T shape. And um, but really, I think it's too big even before that. If it's not too much trouble to machine that groove just like a normal groove, but have a little slot for uh, two small slots for those tabs to sit in. I think that will be much uh, better. Or at least it will be much closer to what a normal piston ring and groove looks like. And so there won't be a mystery if it's if it's able to seal if it if there's enough pressure to seal or not. So I think that's um, a good solution. My printer is starting to. Uh, experienced some trouble. It's been printing fine for uh, for many many a cylinder for casting and uh, I haven't tuned it much but now it seems like I have to adjust some stuff and tighten up the belts and um, and tighten all the screws and stuff like that because it's uh, starting to like there's some vibration here seems like the layers are shifting a bit and uh, it's uh, yeah it's uh, there's some trouble with uh, with leveling and uh, vibration and stuff like that. A new ring is ground and my printer is currently working on the, on the stuffing. I'll end this video here. I think I'll just have to realize that every video can't end with the engine running better than last video. So, but next time, next time with the stuffing and the new 
the ring without that massive ring gap. Crossing fingers. Probably not easy to see on this camera, but the top one is the old ring, and that bottom one, that's the new ring. And you can see the gap is considerably smaller. I'm still, I still have to grind in that, uh, that clearance for the ring peg, though.